Hello and welcome back to another Scripture Bite. I'm Suzanne Palmer and if you are enjoying these teaching videos, please feel free to share, like, and click subscribe below. So if you're ready, let's look at today's Scripture Bite and it's found in 2 Samuel 5, 20. So David went to Baal Perazim and there he defeated them. He said, as waters break out, the Lord has broken out against my enemies before me. So that place was called Baal Perazim. Today we talk about Jehovah Baal Perazim, the God of the breakthrough. Now I want you to just take a moment and reflect on where you were this time last year. What were you doing and where were you physically, emotionally, spiritually? Did you in your wildest dreams ever even begin to imagine where you would be today? Now look at where your life is now. Has there been changes? growth, miracles? Do you have something to celebrate? Are you ready for faith to arise in your heart to begin to believe for even bigger things in this coming year? Because you see, I have felt the brooding presence of the Holy Spirit for the last few weeks in regards not only to this unusual year of 2020, but also for this decade that's still in front of us. This was our breakout year. He keeps telling me that we broke out of norms, traditions, and mindsets. And I firmly believe there is a flooding of his presence that is soon coming. And even though it has started out as a very strange decade, this decade will be one bursting with promise and provision, a mighty harvest of souls and restoration for the ones that have drifted away. An expectancy hovers over the earth as the Spirit of God prepares to break loose. And this is the time that you were born for. I can't shake this feeling. I deeply feel it like I need to shout, rouse the sleepers, wake up, get ready. God's about to break out. Now, I want to teach from a story that is found in 2 Samuel chapter 5. And I love this little story and I think it really illustrates what I'm feeling and what I feel the Spirit is saying to those that have an ear to hear and are wanting to listen. But first, a little story background. Now, David has just been anointed king of all of Israel. He's been king of the tribe of Judah for about six and a half years. After the death of Saul, God tells him to set up his capital in Hebron. But King Saul still has a son, Ishbosheth, who's reigning as king, and he has the remaining tribes with him. Well, for a period of time, there is much intrigue and bloodshed before Ishbosheth is taken off of the throne and all of the elders of Israel, well, they come to David in Hebron and he makes a covenant with them and they anoint him king over all of Israel. Now, David was about 16 or 17 when Samuel first anointed him king and he's now 36 or 37 when the full weight of that prophetic act becomes an actuality. Well, he conquers the Jebusite city of Jerusalem, the fortress of Zion, and that now becomes his new capital, the city of David. And this is where we pick up the story. In verse 17 of 2 Samuel chapter 5, when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about it, and he went down to the stronghold. Now the Philistines had come and spread out in the valley of the Rephaim. So David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? And the Lord answered him, Go, for I will surely deliver the Philistines into your hands. So David went to Baal Perazim, and there he defeated them. And he said, As water breaks out, the Lord has broken out against my enemies before me. So that place was called Baal Perazim. And as soon as the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king, they went up in full force to search for him. Now I want to draw some very obvious parallels. We are stepping into a decade that God's been preparing us for for our whole lives. And I'll prove it to you in the scriptures. Acts 17, 26 says, For from one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their land. So your time and your place. So you're exactly at the right place at the right time today to partner with God in his plan for this decade. Next, you're anointed. 1 John 2, 20 says, But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. And thirdly, you're kings. Revelations 1, 6 says to him, him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now, I just wanted to establish those facts before we proceed. Now, David's just been anointed king, and as soon as the Philistines hear about it, they come after him. Note, 
Be prepared for a little saber rattling in the enemy camp, especially if you desire the anointing on your life. Now, I encourage you to pray for it and eagerly receive it, but you need to understand as soon as you do, be ready because the enemy will be coming after you and he will not be coming alone. Scripture said that the Philistines, the enemy, went up in full force to search for David. So know this from the get-go. The enemy's wanting to cut you down now because if he ignores that anointing and what God God is doing with it in your life, you can better believe he knows it's going to be to his detriment. The enemy wants to destroy your anointing, period. Now that would make many believers say, well, I don't want any trouble with the devil. I have enough. But God didn't give you that anointing to cower in some corner and hide in fear. What did David do? Well, verse 17 says, but David heard about it, the Philistines gathering, and he went down to the stronghold. Now, where do you go when the enemy is advancing on you? And how do you react? Do you freak out and hide? Do you try and ignore it and hope it will go away? Or do you go into your stronghold? Do you even have a stronghold? Yes and yes. And here are some verses to prove it. Write them down. Psalms 18, 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Now, I could stop right here because... This says it all, but I'll continue. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Psalm 62, 6, he is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be shaken. Psalm 46, 1 through 3, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride. Second Samuel 22 2 says, He is the Lord, my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Psalms 144 2 says, My loving kindness and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield and him whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. If Jesus Christ dwells inside of you, then you have access to this stronghold that I just shared in the previous many Bible verses. God is all of that and so much more. He is the fortress or the stronghold that we run into. His arms are always open to gather us in and it's on us if we fail to take advantage of this. But you should also have a specific place like your prayer closet, your prayer chair, your prayer garden, and even the floor by the side of your bed. Wherever it is that you go when you mean business with God, when you really want to meet with him, when the enemy comes after you and sees you heading for your prayer closet, that strikes fear in the enemy camp. It says that you're going for the big guns and you're not going to try to do this in your own strength this time. And this is precisely what David did. He went down to his stronghold and waited. Meanwhile, the Philistines had gotten a little bolder and they were assembled and spread out, making themselves look even more imposing to anyone who was looking on. They were in the valley of the Rephaim, a few miles southwest of Jerusalem. So the backstory here is that this land used to be inhabited by giants. That enemy had been destroyed, and now here was another enemy that was just waiting to take its place. And as the Philistines were getting ready to rumble, what was David doing? Is he in a frantic panic? Is he yelling at everyone saying, why is this happening to me? Is he calling in an airstrike? Well, kind of, because he's inquiring of the Lord. And I found there were nine times that David did this, and I like to think this is what was a normal pattern when there was a decision to be made for David. He asked God what he should do. Should I go and attack them? And will you deliver them into my hands? David went down to his stronghold. He inquired of the Lord, and he didn't move until he had a direct answer from God. Now, when we're in a battle, we often feel like we need to be doing something and doing it fast. We feel a sense of impending doom, like the enemy is coming in like a flood to overwhelm us. It almost seems foolish to stop, drop, and roll out the prayer rug to ask and to wait. But we see this example over and over in Scripture, to be still, to stand and see, to wait for the salvation of the Lord, and on and on. This is one concept in spiritual warfare that we might consider adding to our toolbox. Ask God some very pointed questions. Should I go out to fight? Is this even a battle that you want me involved in? Well, how do you want me to fight? Prayer and fasting? Ask him some real questions and then wait to hear from him before you move out. God answers David and he says, Go, for I will surely deliver the Philistines into your hands. So David went to Baal Perazim and there he defeated them. He said, As waters break out, the Lord has broken out against my enemies before me. And he called that place 
Bale Parazim. Now, Bale Parazim is a real geographical place, but it's also an experience and a person. And I believe for the decade of the 2020s, God wants each one of us to experience both. This year of 2020 is almost gone, and there are many of us who are facing a very real Philistine attack. You know what it is. God's anointed you and prepared you for the season of harvest, and the enemy is coming out in full force against you. But Father God wants you to know that he is no respecter of persons and he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did for David in the Valley of the Giants, well, he will do for you today. He wants to embarrass your enemies and send him running. He's already a defeated foe. Deuteronomy 28, 7 promises the Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but they'll flee from you in seven. Perhaps you've seen pictures of a crack in a dam and how the pressure builds up and the crack begins to get bigger and more cracks sprout up everywhere. Well, you're holding your breath. You're waiting for the inevitable bursting of that solid concrete structure as it yields to the force of that water. Now, that's the picture you need to get of Baal Perazim as waters break out so the Lord has broken out against your enemies. He wants you to experience Baal Perazim, his deliverance from the traps, snares, and the strategies that the enemy has devised in order to keep you from walking out into grand new things this decade that the Lord has planned just for you. And he's even trying to convince you that you might not even have any part in what he's planned for this new season. You're bogged down by your circumstances and the assault that you're finding yourself under right now. But remember, he's a liar and he always projects himself much bigger than he really is. The enemy's all is about to be drowned like Pharaoh's army because the Lord's about to break out. Bel Perazim is not just an experience, it's another name that shows one of the attributes of our God. He is Jehovah Bel Perazim, the God of the breakthrough. God wants to be a wrecking ball in our lives. Now, I've felt this overwhelming sense of, expect of expectancy that I just can't shake it. It's time to allow him to prove himself to us in all of those many facets. This is the moment that we learn to see him through new spiritual eyes to begin to lay hold of all of the promises and the provision to lay aside all of the excuses and the mindsets and the just settling for the crumbs, for living below the spiritual poverty line, for allowing the enemy to dictate our circumstances. In Jesus' name, we come out of agreement with him and his plan for our lives. And we declare and release Jehovah Bel Perazim, God of the breakthrough, to apply his wrecking ball to those areas of our lives that we've allowed to be assaulted by the enemy. Instead of being frustrated at the attacks, we will run into our stronghold and only do battle out of it when the Lord says go. And then we'll wait and we'll watch with childlike expectancy as he breaks out against the enemy of our soul. And we have the victory. It's time to break out of our natural, spiritual, and self-imposed prisons. We are stagnant because of our own words. We see the impossible and then we say that we can't, but we must remember that with God, nothing is impossible. He's Jehovah Bel Perazim, the God of the breakthrough. This is the season that we allow him to break out and we break into what God has destined and positioned us to accomplish. The Philistines came after David to thwart what God had commissioned and he is doing the same thing to us today. This is our time to break out. God has set you in this season for a reason and he will mock your enemies. God will both drown them and refresh you in his mighty gushing flood. God's for you. He has positioned you to do great and mighty things. So get down into your stronghold. Inquire of him. David didn't look at the huge amount of opposition that was spread out in the valley of the Rephaim and he didn't freak out. Perhaps he called to mind, you God, well you defeated the giants that occupied this valley before and if you did it once certainly you can do it again so inquire of the Lord ask him what you should do for the particular enemy that you are facing today and then position yourself to listen remember it's his will not ours we were created for his good pleasure and not our own and he'll not only defeat your enemy but he will give you the territory that he was in possession of as well. The enemy may have assembled against you, but God says you will win. He is the Lord God Almighty, the God of the angel armies. 1 Samuel 5.10 says it this way, And he, David, became more and more powerful because the Lord God Almighty was with him. 
as you step out in faith into this new moment in history, allow Jehovah Belperazim to break out against your enemies and to break you out into your destiny. You'll become more and more powerful for the kingdom of God as you walk in trust and obedience with the Lord God Almighty. And our scripture bite today was 2 Samuel uh, 5 20, Bel Perazim, and there he defeated them. He said, As waters break out, the Lord has broken out against my enemies before me. So that place was called Bel Perazim. So get into your stronghold, inquire of God, and then stand back. Jehovah Bel Perazim is about to break out. Father God, thank you for your word that has gone out today. And Thank you for showing us that you are Jehovah Bel Perazim, the God of the breakthrough, and I am seeking you for a breakthrough in my circumstances right now. I need you to break out against the things that have come against me and have kept me from defeating the enemy and moving deeper into what you've called me to do and be. Holy Spirit, help us to correctly prioritize our lives so that we use our gift of time for your glory and the advancement of your kingdom and help me to make getting a prayer closet a priority. Teach me to run into the stronghold as a first response instead of a last, and then to only do battle out of that stronghold when you give the okay. I want to partner with you in everything that you're going to do as we go deeper together into this new decade. Thank you for giving me everything that I need to do just that. And if there's one who doesn't yet know you as their Lord and Savior is away from you today, simply pray, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and I ask that you would come into my heart right now and forgive me of my sins and be the Lord of my life from this day forward. I believe you are the son of the living God and I give myself to you. Thank you for saving me and help me to grow to know you more as I open up your word and lead me to others who will walk with me in this brand new adventure in you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So if you were blessed or challenged by this message today or you received Jesus as your Savior, I would love to pray for you and hear about it. So please leave me a message in the comment section below. And remember, God's word, the Bible, is the only thing that will ever satisfy or sustain you. It holds the answers to life questions and it's the best way to get to know him. And so until next time, I invite you to open it up and enjoy another scripture bite. Bye-bye.